So, hello, everyone. We are the students in Aeronautics. This is Almer, this is André, and I'm João. Today, we are interested in showing how music affects per, uh, people's performance during a repetitive task. All of this started uh, when we noticed that all, almost everyone hears to music while doing some boring task. And we thought to ourselves, how does music influence them to keep going in doing some task? Studies have shown that music is limited to sensory motor synchronization, for short SMS, the rhythmic coordination of perception and action. Um, sometimes music is also linked to a better production in word. But Um, studies have shown, have shown that Studies have shown that music is linked to sensory motor synchronization, for short SMBS, the rhythmic coordination of perception and action. Sometimes music is also linked to better production in work. But studies have also shown that the type of music and even personal preferences influence a lot on these results. So we tried to answer our question with this project, and we hope that at the end of this presentation, all of you can understand a little bit better how can, music can help us a lot during these tasks. At the start of our project, we were wondering about very, uh, very different questions, uh, very different questions around this topic, like does music help in repetitive? actions does it make those easier do people tend to follow the rhythm of, the rhythm of the music when they are doing this these actions are these actions going to be less exhausting for them uh, with all of these questions on here uh, we came up with the prediction that music imp improves productivity while doing a task and decreases the amount of errors doing that task With all of these questions, uh, to test our questions and ideas, we used a variety of different materials. The first, we needed an Arduino, which is an electronic platform intended for anyone making interactive projects, which is this thing right here. <laughs> Sorry, there's a lot of things in that image. Uh, then we used Bonsai, one of the things in the screen, which is an open source visual and reactive programming language. And uh, then to process all the data that we gathered, we used Spider, which is another free programming environment for Python. Um, it's worth noting that all of these are open source, what, that, what means that we can modify them to use them in specific uh, actions. Like if they are not coded to uh, blink a light in some seconds, we can do, make them do that with a modification. Then we also need uh, one laptop end, which is basically a small portable computer incorporated with an Arduino. Three LED lights, each one with one color, red, green, and blue, and three buttons linked to the LED lights with the same colors. And then all we needed was some headphones, cables, and a box. <laughs> Each experiment lasts about seven minutes. The layout consists of three buttons, like you see, uh, like you seen uh, uh, in the image, like you are, are seeing in the in the image, um, uh, all packed in, in the box that we designed. Uh, each participant is told to press the button whenever the corresponding light turns on, 
and that action causes the light to turn off and make another light immediately turn on in a randomized way. The experience is divided in, two, in four trials, each one lasting about one minute and a half. In the first trial, there won't be music. In the second, we'll use a slow beat music, uh, 7 BPM. Uh, in the third, we'll use a fast beat music, uh, 120 BPM. And in the fourth, we'll use the subject's favorite music is it because it will be probably more immersive for that person. Every subject will only be allowed to use one finger of his dominant hand, and every subject won't be allowed to press more than one button at a time. To start, the subject has to press the red button. We collected, um, we collected data from 30 participants. Um, most of, most of them were from Champalimon, Champalimon Foundation being investigators and our colleagues in an aeronautics project. Uh, with the exception of six of them, we'll, uh, that, that we um, obtained for our neighborhoods. We analyzed the reaction time and the amount of uh, errors that each person made. And these are the results that we are obtained from, from our data. Are these the We decided to analyze all our results with uh, restarting box plot graphic that you can see. Um, um, all of this, <laughs> sorry. Um, every point in this graphic uh, corresponds to one value of one person that we do the experiment. Um, and this specific course graphic uh, also shows us the middle value in each set of values, which is the median. So if we can basically know not the average, but the value that was exactly in the middle if we put uh, the values in order. Um, and then we can see the results of the clicks per minute uh, for short as P uh, C uh, CPM. With different music conditions, as you can see, sound, flow, breath, and shots. As you may notice in this graphic, we can see a trend uh, to, uh, to people being faster. This may be because of the BPMs of the music, but this may also be due to them getting accommodated with pushing the buttons and the reaction time getting better. Uh, and then you can, you can also notice that in choice plots, there's a lot more variability because uh, we think that's because as the music there were chosen by the, the average specific person and BPMs vary a lot, uh, that makes it to the values to scatter a lot. Uh, this is the second graphic. Uh, in this graphic, we can see the correlation between the music condition and the delta which is the subtraction of the CPM with the beats per minute or short BPM. This will show us how close the person was to syncing with the music. With the music, We can also see that in slow music, people are way faster than the BPM of the music. But in the faster track, the CPM and the BPM are very similar. This may be caused by people maintaining the CPM of the try without music. In the trice condition, there is more variability because the beat in the chosen music may be irregular. In this graphic, we can see the percentage of errors um, uh, in the different music conditions, being again, silent, slow, fast, and choice. Um, we can see a slight difference in the medium. Uh, in each music condition, although there is an increase in the highest results throughout the conditions, this may be caused caused due to an increase in size, increasing size, the increasing fatigue fatigue rate throughout the experiment. Uh, here you can see the the fourth graphic. Uh, on this graphic, we, we are seeing the correlation between how much someone plays video games and the percentage of errors. We can see more consistent values in people who play a lot of video games. Beyond this, we can see a decrease in the median starting at the rarely game average. It's very interesting that although people who never play video games have any inconsistent values, 
they have a median lower than the people who play video games, rarely or sometimes. It's also interesting that between the people who play video games, the median and the highest value are lower the, the more they play. This is the last graphic we have. So um, in this graphic, we are comparing the delta to the music habit. So if the person uh, hears music in repetitive action, complex action, always or never. Um, we noticed that people who are always listening to music are way closer to syncing with music uh, than the other people. And that there isn't much difference between the median of the other categories. Of course, the first one we think is, of course, because they always hear music and they're uh, accustomed to do that. And so they go there. And the other ones we don't know, especially the complex one, because we had very few people who did that. So it's not very reliable. So in conclusion, to conclude, most people don't, don't synchronize with the music while they're doing their repetitive tasks. But listening to music very often uh, can make sync while doing a repetitive task. And playing games and, and playing games often can uh, decrease the amount of errors that you made in this test, in this experiment that we made. And we can as uh, we cannot assume that mu music does repetitive repetitive boring tests more enjoyable. But when we're doing the experiment, uh, most of the participants say that, say, oh, in the last, in the last try, I was less tired because, it, and, and we are assuming there was because it was their favorite song. So no, no worries there. Although we managed to get all this data, there were some things that could have gone a little better, like time management and the group work. And now to finish our presentation, we would like to give, to give a huge thanks to all of the Neuronautics team, uh, to all the participants in our, in our experiment and all the Neurocadets who also have helped us. And a special thanks to Mateus and Danby who made all this possible. Is there any questions? Yes. Uh, why did you use the median? Uh, why did you use the median? Oh, yeah, uh, why did you use the average? Yeah. Uh, because there were a lot of different results, and there were some results that we could see in some graphs. There were points that were all the way up to almost 200 CPM. So it's more safe to use the medium. Any more questions?